Mayors and gentle cults, welcome to a very special edition of BNN recorded live from Fiesta Equestria 2013. I am recording live right here at the convention Saturday at approximately 4 p.m. I am joined today by special guest Michael Dangerfield. Welcome to Appaloosa! The voice, as you may well have guessed, of Applejack's cousin, Brayburn. Bam! How's it going, folks? How, how you doing? I'm having an amazing time here down in Houston. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really hot. I came from the cave. We call it Van Caver because it's so cold and wet. Um, anyways, we're having an amazing time down here. Lots of great people and just having so much fun. I hope to see you soon. I'm going to be in Nashville in a few weeks and, and maybe in your hometown at some point soon. So we'll see. Cool, cool. All right. So we were talking last night over drinks, and you, you were talking about a set of questions that you're always asked. Mm -hmm. So let's start out with a question that I bet you have never gotten before at a convention. Oh, okay. All right. This is going to fly out of left field. Are you ready? Let's do it. What's your favorite color? <laughs> uh, I would probably have to say blue. Blue? I think it's blue. All right. Yeah. Well, I guess it helps that I'm wearing a blue shirt, and I've got naturally blue eyes. Bam. Boom. All right, so you have already mentioned that you are from Vancouver, mm -hmm. which is just north of the border. That's right. So how many times have you been to the United States counting this trip down here? Oh, man, I couldn't even tell you. I, I actually I lived in Kentucky uh, for about four and a half years. I went to university there. So uh, I, I you know, have certainly experienced. And I also lived in Los Angeles for about half a year. And I, I honestly have probably been to the States 500 times. I, I mean, I don't wow. even... Like, well, and the thing is, my mom's... My mom's side of her family is all from the U.S. So basically, we have cousins and relatives and everybody living down here. And, you know, my grandfather was born in New York City. Uh, I have huge history, actually, with this country. And, and, and not to go too side tangenty here, but it's, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that the U.S. has given me in sports and in entertainment. And, and I kind of, because in Canada, we just don't have those opportunities you know, to work on a show like this or, or whatever. And 90% of the work that I do is American work. Wow. So it's, yeah, Okay. very grateful. Cool. So uh, side Canadian note then, how many times in your life have you used the word hoser? Ha <laughs> 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 you're such a hoser, dude. Uh, <laughs> probably not that many, actually. I, you know, it's funny. When I went to Kentucky, I kind of lost, I don't know if you guys hear it or not, but I get a lot of people saying to me, man, you, t you sound like you're American. When you speak, because they don't, I don't say out in a boot and all. Like I'm just okay. living in. What's that? A. I say a a little bit, but I mean it's. It's not very just, dominant. No, I mean it's just like I've I've. When I went to Kentucky, it kind of knocked that Canadian kind of way of talking out of me because, and it's also like when I when I work, uh, like I said, ninety percent of the stuff I'm doing is is American work, so I have to sound American. like I'm from the states. All right, right. That makes sense. <clears throat> All right, so what is your favorite thing about Texas so far? Well, the food's been pretty damn good. I have to say that, just for starters. Southern people can cook. Yeah. We're not like, the healthiest, but we can yeah, cook. Yeah, had, I had a serious chicken burger, fried chicken burger <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God, with cheese, and it was so good. And, I was like, oh, my God, this and how, is amazing. And how many years did that take off of your life? Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, uh, just some of the... You know, all of the people that have been here, all the fans and stuff have been so uh, just honestly, like when I was in Vegas, it was the same thing. Like all, all, all of you guys are so positive, full of love and and so easily approachable and easy to talk to. And it's just it's just so great to be around. I mean, it's you know what I mean? Like it's just it, it, it's it's you know, I just enjoy that energy and that's a great energy to be around. So I think you guys are awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we obviously think you're awesome. Otherwise, we wouldn't have thrown you a damn convention, but you know well, how it is. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. All right, so you, you went to the University of Kentucky, and last night we were talking about you got a degree in, was it business? It was actually Murray State University, which is in Kentucky. Um, but yeah, my degree was in uh, business administration with an area in marketing. So I really ever, never actually really used it, but you could say that I market myself for acting and entertainment and stuff like that, and, and business. It's, it is a business, so... You know, you have to understand how to run a business because you're kind of your own business when you do this, this work, right? Right. You're an entrepreneur sort of selling yourself. That's it. I mean, that's exactly it. You know, how do you, it's, it basically, and I, t I teach this in my class that I say, like, you know, you got to figure out what you do really well. What's your brand in, in terms of the commercials that you do or which archetypes are you going to do for, for animation? And then, and then how are you going to present that to the business and work it so that you can deliver it and do it? You know, how are you going to do that? 
And then there's the marketing side of it. Once you're in the business, how do you keep people knowing about you and all of that? And then, so it's, it's, an, it's constant. It's a constant flow of sometimes you're working, sometimes you're marketing, sometimes you're doing accounting, right? So. I got it. I got it. All right, so I, I saw a bit of this on Twitter earlier. I don't know how much you're allowed to say. Are you, are you coming back for season four? Can you tell me if you're coming back? I am coming back for season four. Um, just recorded the episode like three weeks ago. <clears throat> and uh, but I can't say no, because they just you know I think they'd be upset. So, uh, but you're, yeah, you're back. I'm back. All right, I'm back, baby. Yeah. yeah. So right. it was cool. It was actually I had so much fun just because it was like, it, you know, I had gone to uh, to Vegas to the convention there and and met a lot of the fans and stuff like that. And so it was really neat to be able to go back and do the show now, knowing what I know about the show at this level. I'd always know I've known about My Little Pony for 25 years. Sure. Or longer. I mean, my mom was delivering Christmas gifts to to needy families in like early '80s or whatever it was, and the biggest gift for families that couldn't afford a gift that wanted a, something was it like a My Little Pony doll or whatever it was. This is back in the '80s, like so. Like I've known about this show forever. It's just it's sort of like with Transformers and stuff like that. There's reincarnations and sure. you know people get it's it's wild. I mean. <clears throat> All right, so that, that last question may have seemed like another standard question, so let me throw you another one from left field. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Well, I have a lot of dreams that, I, when I'm, uh, that I'm flying. And no I, kid. Yeah, I, I do. And I, uh, like, just various, you know, dreams where I'm, like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll run really fast, and there's, like, this hill, and I'll kind of run like this and run down the hill, and, I, and then I'll just kind of take off like this, and I'm flying, like, in the air, and it's, and it's just wild. I mean, it's, it happens every now and then. And I love it. Like, it's the most amazing <laughs> thing, right? I'm like, and I'm so excited when it happens in the dream because I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm having the flying dream. This is so weird. Like, there's almost part of me that's maybe like a little bit of, I don't know. It's weird. But I, what's funny is that when I try to fly, this is going to sound bizarre, but when I, in the dream, when I try to fly and put effort towards it, that's when I start falling to the ground. And then oh. as soon as I let go... And just like let it happen, that's when it's just like, Mer. and you go back up. So it's almost like this lesson for life, right? Like as soon as you try and force something or, you know, try to fit something in a hole that doesn't fit or whatever, it, it doesn't work, right? And you, you got to go with the sure. flow and just let stuff happen naturally. And, and so anyways, that's a, that is a bit of Deepak Chopra for you, for me to give to the, um, <laughs> to the audience for you. And I've just, we were talking about it with Trevor Duvall and Sam Vincent about Trying to get in touch with yourself and allowing the further flow to happen. A little bit of spiritus mundi. That's right, that's right. Anyways, I'm being <laughs> silly. <laughs> All right, so if you allow me to sidestep from ponies for a second, okay. you are also now officially the brother of a half demon known as Inuyasha. What's that like? Well, well, little brother, it appears that your sword is bigger than mine. <laughs> that's cool you know about that because i mean i guess you know i don't know how much of my stuff crosses over that you know you know how many bronies know about even ace ventura or like even yasha or seshomaru and stuff like that so it's there's some p i was just at oda fest in calgary uh, about three weeks ago and they were pretty nuts about seshomaru it was like a big they were pretty excited did you have fun oh it was amazing yeah it was awesome well you know because spoilers seshomaru Pretty big part in the last uh, battle with Naraku, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was big, and I, it was funny. I got a lot of emails and and various things from you know, like like uh, YouTube comments where people were like really upset that David Kay was leaving the role, and I was like, you know, and I'm kind of known for my mimicking ability. That's one of the things I do. I do various shows or whatever it might be where I actually they want that voice and I give it to them or whatever, and and I was just like, I think I can lock in on this this one, and I and I know David and I've worked with him and. And so I just kind of started getting into, uh, you know, that place where David Kay kind of took the voice in there. And I just kind of found it. And I just sort of was like in that zone and, and they gave me the part. And, and then I just, you know, boy, oh boy, people were like, I have other stuff on YouTube, but they were like, you know, on videos that have nothing to do with anime or anything. And they were like, how dare you take over that role? It better be good. <laughs> you know, snake eyes to you, curses, and just all this stuff. And I was just like, guys, wait till you see it and then decide, you know, because, and then now people have seen it and they were very happy with it. And it's a little bit of a different take, but for the most part, it's the same, same guy style. and same essence and all that. Yeah, so. Well, it, just, it blows my mind because <clears throat> for, for those of you who don't know, 
this is actually the third Inuyasha voice actor to now be on Ponies. And we got Inuyasha is what, Snips, and then Koga is Chief Thunderhooves, and now we've got okay. you as Bray Bird. So that was the Lee, so that was Lee, Lee Tokar? It was, was uh, it? Scott McNeil. Oh, so, yeah, that's Scott right. Scott McNeil okay. is Koga. He's also Chief Thunderhooves. And then that's have, right. He was in the same episode as, as, uh, as Bray Bird. Right. And that's then right. you got uh, Richard Ian Cox, who is Inuyasha, who that's is right. Snips. I think he's Snips. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, my little brother, <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Shining Armor was also in Inuyasha. Wow! So who plays Shining Armor again? Is that Andrew Francis or? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a couple more questions. I want okay. you get to your next panel. Okay. I'm going to ask you to do something fairly difficult here, but I don't want you to worry about it. I'm going to yeah. ask you to pick your favorite pony actor or actress to work with, but I don't want you to worry because only Tara Strong watches my show on a regular basis. Okay. <laughs> say Ashley Ball, he says. Um, well, I have to say, actually, just recording the episode uh, uh, that I did recently, and um, I have to say Andrea is uh, one of my favorites because... And I'll say, I'll say, I'll say why, because I've known her for so, like, we've known each other for 10 years. Like, okay. And we've been working together for 10 years, and we, one of the first shows that I did uh, when I came to Vancouver was a show called uh, Yakety Yak, which was about a moose in Onion Falls. I don't know if you remember that show or not. It was on Nick, I think Nickelodeon or whatever, and I played Keo's dad. And he was sort of this, like, hey, Keo, turn the television. I've seen you, Rex. Makes me want to throw myself at you. Like, there's this sort of, like, you know, that kind of guy. And, uh, and so Andrea played, I think, Lemony or something or one of the characters on it. And, uh, and I don't know. It was just, like, and so, and then throughout the years, we've seen each other. And, and then we just happened to, like, work more and more over the last little while. And, and uh, so, yeah, I, I would say she's, she's up there. She's sure. up there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So last question. I will, I will let you get to your panel. Okay. You're Canadian. That's right. What are your plans to celebrate Canada Day, which is coming up next week? On uh, July 1st. Monday, right? Right, I That's think right. so. That's right. It's Monday, yeah. You well, I'm going to hang out with my family. My daughter's three, so I'm going to probably take her. My wife and I will go to uh, probably to one of the parks, and, and uh, we go to this one park every year, and it's like a lot of stuff going on. There's singing and crafts and all there's stilts and all sorts of stuff going on, you know, with that. And... Uh, so we'll probably do something like that, I would imagine. I think we'll have some fun and, and um, see if we can catch some fireworks as well at, at night. And uh, it's just a great day. I mean, my, my daughter's uh, she was ill for a little while when she was younger, and, uh, but now she's doing a lot better. And so it's just I'm so grateful. And, and uh, so, yeah, we just kind of we get her out wherever we can, you know. Cool. Mm -hmm. They do fireworks on Canada Day? Isn't that a little exciting for Canada Day? I know, it's a little much, isn't it? Uh -huh. I, know, we, I don't know if we can handle it. You guys I tend to be a, a fairly laid-back people, from what yeah. I understand. Oh, no, we, well, us, us folks, we get to crazy, though. You know oh, okay, that. I gotcha. And uh, <laughs> as we drink the special water. The special there. water. Yes. That comes from Northern Superior. Yes, that's right. It uh, trickles down the mountain, right, into our, <laughs> into our piping. It's oh, goodness. excellent. Uh, yeah, no, we're going to have some fun. I mean, it, honestly, for me, it's just I love it's all family time and, and just hanging out when I'm not working or, you know, and so, yeah, it's going to be good. All right. All right. Michael Dangerfield, everybody. Thank Thanks, you so everybody. much. I'll you take you care of that. We'll see you on the next one, all right? You just take it easy and make sure you love each other. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm the best journalist Equestria has to offer. Stay classy. Ta-ta. Stay classy, my friends.